On the verge of the iPhone 10 release, I decided to go back in time and use as a daily driver the original iPhone and remind myself where it all started. This exercise was fun and bizarre at the same time and it made me extremely appreciative of what we have in our pockets today. You might think you remember those times just as I did, but let me show you how technology have changed over the last 10 years. This is E, and if this is your first time here and you are into non-traditional honest tech reviews, feel free to subscribe to this channel and click on the bell icon so you don't miss anything. So right off the bat, my main concern besides whether or not the phone will power on was the battery. I was really concerned that it won't last me a few hours, let alone a full day. So I played it safe and took the only 30 pin cable I could find. It looked nasty, but hey, it worked. These are getting uh, obsolete. Well, they are obsolete, but they are getting very uh, difficult to find. Next, I had to do was to find a SIM converter for my nano SIM card because back in 07, regular SIM cards were almost as big as SD cards. Once the phone was ready to go, I tested it by calling my wife and I took off to run some errands. Hello. Baby, I'm calling you from the original iPhone. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, so this is the first phone call with the original iPhone and it works. Thank you. <laughs> Once I got into my car, I tried to connect the phone over Bluetooth and stream some music. Now, this exercise took me a while before I realized that the first iPhone's Bluetooth connection worked only with a proprietary iPhone headset that was sold separately. Speaking about headsets, back then the concern that people had was the fact that headphone jack was indented and was able to work only with Apple earbuds. Nowadays, we don't have such a problem. <laughs> so I took off relying on my car radio and while driving I realized that I needed to call a phone number that I saved the day before, but it was in my primary phone. So my next task was to sync my Gmail contacts, which turned out to be the biggest hassle throughout the day. Password incorrect. Okay, I'm gonna give it one last try. Okay, password incorrect. No, that's not, that's not true. With time, protocols and email standards have evolved and changed, and the little guy was not able to establish a connection with the Gmail servers. Since it's something that was not anticipated back in 07, the phone kept giving me wrong password messages, but I knew the problem lied elsewhere. Okay, we're getting close. It's trying to load up the Google logo. One thing I noticed when I change the letter, if it's uh, capital letters or small letters, it doesn't change the letter of the keyboard. It just uh, lets up the, um, the shift key. I thought I'm smarter though, and I decided to use the browser and log into my Gmail account through it. I did not expect that to be a problem, but my momentum was quickly put to a stop once I couldn't go beyond the email input screen. The old Safari browser was not able to parse the new JavaScripts, hence Gmail was not letting me go to my password page. I turned off Safari's JavaScript and I felt as if I'm a genius once I managed to log in, but then Safari kept crashing every time I tried to load Gmail's home screen. Good thing I was at the mall and there was a car exhibition and I got quickly distracted with the idea of testing the iPhone's camera and video capabilities. Once I pulled out the camera app though, I remembered the simplicity and the single shutter button that existed on the screen. The original iPhone did not have pro options, portrait mode, wide angle mode, filters, or even video mode. Heck, it didn't even have a selfie camera. I tried to remember how I was snapping my own photos back in the day while guessing where the shutter button is, since none of the volume rocker buttons acted as a shutter button. Yeah, you don't have a front facing camera. So the way you take a selfie, is actually the way you take a regular photo with you turning your phone like this and you snap a photo. This was way before selfies. I have to flip the phone. How was I used to I used to know how to do this. Now there's no there's no autofocus as well. So I can pretty much grab the phone anywhere on the screen and, and take a photo. Did I take a photo? <gasps> I took a photo! It worked! Now that's what I call a selfie. Before I show you the photos I took, let me remind you that the iPhone had a single two megapixel shooter and that was at the time where photos were taken mainly by photographers. So later on I decided to wash my car and I thought that would be a good opportunity to find a car wash and use Google Maps. 
Thankfully, it was running just fine and it even pulled relevant results, which was amazing. Once I found out what I was looking for though, I was quickly reminded that it did not have turn by turn navigation and I remembered how big of a deal that was back in the early smartphone years. The phone still worked and it was showing me directions, but I had to constantly tap the screen to keep it awake and flip the map in my mind so I can figure out which direction I should go next. While waiting at the car wash, I wanted to try and watch some videos. Unsurprisingly though, YouTube app did not work, uh, nor did the browser version or uh, Facebook or... Okay, so there's a YouTube app, which I'm pretty sure it's not gonna work. Cannot connect to YouTube. YouTube, why are you not supporting your original mobile app? <laughs> okay, let's try to Google, not Google, browse, browse YouTube and see if that works. Oh, it's loading. It is loading. And it crashed. Oh, I'm in, I am in Facebook. Let me turn down the music. I'm in Facebook, guys. Oh my God. I see the status bar and I see no timeline. I see no timeline. That's not good. I mean, it's, it's trying to load some. In fact, the only social network that worked was Twitter and that was through Safari. And I managed to uh, release a tweet to bring myself back to reality. But as you can see, Twitter works just fine. Let me reload the page. It lags a little bit. I don't know why. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Fantastic day. Now, I don't have emojis. <laughs> yeah, I don't have emojis. So I'm just going to put a smiley face. That's probably the slowest tweet in history. Hey, there it is. I tweeted from the original iPhone. Nice. At the end of the day, I kept realizing more and more how much smartphones have evolved. My day was pretty quiet because I was missing things like notifications. I had no control center. The information I had to pull myself, it was not fetched to me, which might not be such a bad thing sometimes. So after 10 years, the phone ended up the day with 41% battery left in it. Even though I was connected to Wi-Fi and I was using 2G, yes, there was no 3G back in the day, and that alone was a stunning achievement by itself. My day was over and I felt excitement and nostalgia at the same time. I can safely say that I'm officially ready for the iPhone 10. As for its maker, I think it's time to turn it off for one last time and put it on display somewhere around the house. So, what was your first smartphone? It's been a pleasure. This is E. Over and out. When I was in the United States and I bought this phone, I was a student and people will start asking me questions. Now show me how you pinch to zoom, show me how you flick to, to scroll. It was just, it was an amazing experience.